welcome to this edition of the Economy and Politics Show. I am Otto Abasi Abaseko. In this edition, our focus is on Nigeria and its quest for sustainable development. Nations that have attained sustainability are those that have had high value for sovereign wealth funds, which are accruing from the utilization of their resources. Exactly two years ago, the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority was established with the mandate of managing the excess crude account and also investing in funds and viable projects that will guarantee Nigeria's development. In this video, the CEO of the NSIA, Mr. Uche Oji, speaks on the funds that have been initiated and the various projects embarked upon by the NSIA, we should unlock the growth potentials of Nigeria. We started under two years ago at NSIA, and as many of you know, we have the fundamental, uh, we have the responsibility to invest three funds. The first fund is what was described as a stabilization fund. The idea of the stabilization fund is to provide stabilization support to the government in times of economic stress. That fund at the moment holds 20% of NSIA's assets. It's fully invested, we're located to three managers. And that fund is designed to be daily liquidity and therefore the returns are not extremely high. And frankly, they're not designed to be high because we will need to draw that money at short notice to provide stabilization support for the government. That has been fully invested. Luckily, so far, the performance of that fund is slightly ahead of what we expected, which is returns of just under 2%. Right now, I think we're tracking about 3.5% 3, 3 on that fund, which is really good, given the way the fund is designed. You know, it's interesting that as we go through what is a low interest rate environment, it's difficult to really make that fund perform any better than that. And I think that is the first challenge we face as investors. When you have a fund designed the way the stabilization fund is designed, you really cannot drive significantly higher returns. And that is one of the challenges I believe this report has uh, addressed by our Invest. But it starts to get more interesting when you look at the future generations fund, which is the second fund we run at the NSIA. In the future generations fund, we have allocated 40% of the assets in future generations fund. And within that 40%, we have allocated it in, four, in, in about five major asset classes. The first is obviously equities. We have 25% of the entire asset class in equities. Split 10% in developed markets, 15% in emerging markets. Our fundamental view is that we still believe that there is more growth to be derived out of emerging markets. A, because we have not seen the same asset valuation disconnect to the extent that we have seen in developed markets. But having said that, we also recognize that developed markets seem to have more tools at its disposal to navigate this environment. And so we kind of kept a view of 10% exposure to developed markets and 15% exposure to emerging markets. All in all, so far this year has been good, but I think that as we go into the second half of the year, it's gonna be more challenging. And it's gonna be more challenging, not just for geopolitical reasons, but it's gonna be more challenging in my opinion, because I think that the question raised in the report of our investor about the tools available to policymakers will be called more into question in the back half of the year. So 25% of future generation fund is in equities. 25% is allocated to hedge funds. Again, this is very interesting because most of the hedge funds have struggled this year because this is very unusual and the best environment for hedge funds. We've been very lucky, we have four hedge fund, um, funds uh, who, into which we've allocated. Two have done extremely well, two haven't. All in all, we're ahead of the index for hedge funds. But they are struggling because the environment as we see today continues to be more challenging because, again, for some of the issues that have been raised about asset valuations. The third asset class is private equity. This is very interesting for us because we believe that fundamentally private equity will continue to return significantly better than most of the uh, developed, uh, most of the public market assets. We have, been, at the moment, invested in a whole bunch of private equity assets, um, and two of the funds we've invested in recently are focused on Nigeria. And I really want to digress a little bit here to address a misconception about the NSIA. I think when we started, the first misconception is that we don't deal with Nigerian banks. That's absolutely not true. At a certain point in the second half of the year, we had 30% of our assets across various um, asset classes that we have seen from some of the Nigerian banks. But we also have to remember that the essence of the NSIA is to provide a hedge to the Nigerian environment. And as a consequence, we cannot put everything here. If you do, how do you intervene? 
So there is all the pushback about you must do something to support the environment, but I also want people to understand that the fundamental vision of this is to provide a hedge to the environment. You cannot intervene with what you have internally, you have to intervene with what you have externally. And as a consequence, the biggest challenge you face is how do you draw that balance? The growth is here. The, the outlook for growth in Nigeria, there's no question about it. This is not the essence of the lecture. I'm not going to try to explain that. We agree. But please do not forget the essence of this fund is to be able to provide stabilization support. And consequently, drawing that fine balance is very important for us. The fourth asset class we've invested in, and we've only just started to invest in, is what we describe as hard assets. And here it's real estate. Some of you know we've been in the market for real estate assets. A couple of them will be closing on very, very soon. Um, and I think that uh, uh, that broadly creates the balance that we have in the Future Generations Fund. One thing that's obviously missing is sectors like oil and gas, which we have chosen not to invest in at the moment. Uh, less more about oil and gas. Again, back to the essence of the fund. We are here to provide stabilization support and a hedge on oil and gas, which is the real source of revenue for the country. The third fund we run is the Nigeria Infrastructure Fund, and this is where it starts to get really interesting because this is where we've had many interfaces with banks in this room and uh, various organizations uh, that have worked with NSIA. We started out deciding that out of 15 investable sectors, we will start with five. The first sector we focused on was motorways. The second is agriculture, the third is healthcare, the fourth is real estate, and the fifth um, is uh, at the moment, we've added actually gas processing for power. So gas to power as a sector is a fifth sector we decided to invest in. So from gas assets all the way to power assets. Again, skirting away from you know, investing in oil assets per se. So it is people who are doing gas processing or people who are investing in pipelines to deliver gas to power companies. These are the areas that are of interest to us. Again, there are 15 sectors, so when I make this statement, people say, what about IT, what about this, what about that? The answer is we'll get there. But let's also not forget, we only have, we're not one multi billion dollars, as Christina Dejapu said. I wish we were, but we're not. We've been at $1 billion, and recently we've just received $550 million of assets. That puts us at $1.55 billion. The key strategy we started with was to outsource the first two funds, Stabilization and Regenerations Fund. This is an important point to make, partly because the sweet spot for sovereign wealth fund is roughly $3 billion. At that point, we actually start to build that capability in-house. We're not yet there, therefore we've outsourced a lot of the first two funds, but the infrastructure fund is a fund that we run internally. What have we done so far with infrastructure fund? The first motorways investment we have made is into the second Niger Bridge. Now here, I've read reports about nothing is happening. That's actually not true. The first thing we've had to do is pay compensation. This bridge is not a small bridge. Many of you think about it, and I've heard comparisons to the uh, bridge in Ikoi, which is a wonderful bridge, but what we're building is not just that. What we're building is 12 kilometer bridge, plus another 28 kilometer of access road. It's a 40 kilometer construction. It's significant. The actual bridge itself is going to be 12 kilometers, and it's three lane by three lane. If you compare what we have today there, which is one, two lane, two by one, this is three by two, significant, construction work will be going there for the next four years. But most of this first year was spent paying some early compensation uh, uh, to the people who own the land there. And from the end of this year, I hope that you start to see some real fiscal infrastructure put there. $700 million investment, and a lot of it will be funded. So I think there's enough work that will come out of there that will keep everyone busy over the next four years. But that's the first investment we've made. We've also been public about an interest in investing in Lagos about an expressway, which I believe is a significant piece of infrastructure for this country. 120,000 average vehicles per day, there is no way that cannot be profitable and something that is suitable for public-private partnerships and should be supported. So these are the two major investments we've been interested in and we've been together interested and we have committed to uh, in motorways. Healthcare, we have actually gone in healthcare to sign uh, uh, agreements with mostly federal institutions. We have about eight of them we've signed up with. We're looking at 16 in total to do everything from specialist clinics to diagnostic centers. This is area we believe is very, very important. If you look at the statistics, it's quite frightening what it is that needs to be done in healthcare. If you look at healthcare, then it's a very simple statistic and the data is old. The data is about four years old, but 30,000 Nigerians, and this is data we worked with the Ministry of Health to determine, 
spend something in the order of a billion dollars a year on medical tourism. The portion of big portions of it are spent on four areas. Cardio, significant investment going, so about 25% of the spending going to cardio. Uh, orthopedics, arthritis and the like. Um, cancer and, and renal issues. This is probably the four areas that consume about 85% of the reason why people go abroad. And we believe that there is an opportunity here to invest. Limited intervention, but again, all these sectors in themselves are profitable. The final thing I want to talk about that we're doing at the moment is actually a new fund we're setting up, something called Nigeria Credit Enhancement Facility. And this is very interesting because as NSIA, we cannot provide guarantees. And when people come to us and ask us for guarantees, we cannot provide guarantees. We do not provide guarantees by law. However, what we can do is invest in a vehicle that would provide guarantees. We've talked about this. We've had many of you in various uh, sessions where we've talked about what this will achieve. And the group that is setting that business up is currently traveling around and seeing many people this week uh, that will be launched. What is the essence of this? The biggest challenge we face is how do you attract latent pools of capital like insurance companies or pension funds in infrastructure? You cannot make them invest in infrastructure as it is today because it is really not investable. You have to be able to provide some enhancement, some sort of guarantee that allows your pension and my pension. I don't know about some of you, but I need my pension. I don't think you should go into infrastructure as it is today. It should be something that is provided and enhanced through a vehicle. And I think this is one of the key things we are driving, which I believe, again, help us unlock little pools of capital. These are the things that NSI is all about. He further speaks on the outlook of the economy and the need for sustainable framework for the Sovereign World Fund. You know, I look at the NSIA and I, I think that the bigger vision is not so much about what we achieve with it today, or tomorrow, but it's a consistency by which it is funded and what it can achieve over the next 10, 15, 20 years. I have been privileged to advise many sovereign wealth funds. Um, I remember when I was at Goldman Sachs Asset Management, the first one of the funds we were advising them was a very small fund out of nowhere and had given us $50 million to manage. And the questions were always around, interesting, okay, let's see what they're going to do. Then they started with $600 million and today, Norwegian sovereign wealth fund is $840 billion. It's about discipline, it's about consistency, it's about the government being behind it and driving it consistently. It's not just about what we're doing today as a team. It's something that I believe if we look back 40 years from now, we can say we actually put this together. I hate to do the math, but if we put aside a billion dollars a year over the last, since 1974 during the first oil boom, and look back and compound the returns of five, six percent, again, I'm not a math whiz, many of you here are, Again, it's not really important to look back at fine history. Let's look forward over the next 40 years and hope that there is enough consistent support that will drive this. It will create opportunities, not just for Nigeria, but I think as the banking environment starts to evolve, this is one of those things that, prevent, that provide a solid base for the environment to work. The management, investment, and utilization of the sovereign wealth fund is critical to any nation considering the uncertainty in the global economy. With a seed capital of $1 billion, probity and accountability is key for the operations of the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority. This will guarantee economic development that connects with inclusive growth and puts Nigeria on the path of stability. And that will be all for this edition of the Economy and Politics Show. To engage us, you log on to our website www.webtvng.com or our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter. Also. For daily news analysis, you log on to ProjectNG.com for the Nigeria in One Minute news. Till next edition, thank you for watching and have a great day.